everybody and welcome to the House Show Podcast. We are talking Money in the Bank 2018 right here at the House Show Studios. I am always Corey to my left. Uh, this is Joe. And we have a special guest tonight. Special guest, introduce yourself. All right, before I do that, <laughs> I've, yeah. I've got a shocker for you. This is, this is a swerve, bro, okay? Oh, yeah. This is going to blow your little minds, okay? Tonight, we saw... Jinder Mahal versus Roman Reigns. And I know right now this is like, oh, James Sunderland killed his wife all along. And God. and you're only just realizing it. But yeah, we watched that. We did. It, I mean, it's a completely alien concept to me now. I don't know what happened, <laughs> but so we saw it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I could say that about the whole paper. We watched Money in the Bank tonight. Can you believe it? Who would have thunk it? <laughs> Those dose of toes belong to the Jim Sterling. Oh yeah, I didn't say my name. Hello, I'm, <laughs> J- I'm Jim Sterling. How do? Uh, we're glad to have you. We got a uh, we got a Mason joining us in the back. Uh, uh, hey, how you doing? That's all we ever heard from him anyway, on the podcast, unless he shouted out to Lillian or Sasha or Paige. Uh, Which please still do that. Please, that'd, be, yeah, that'd be great. Spell it out. Uh, so, folks, we're going to run down Money in the Bank. Oh, we are going to run it down. Don't yeah, you worry. I think WWE beat us to that, running down. We're, yeah. we're a little punch drunk with it. Uh, it's been a long damn night that didn't need to be. So we're going to try and make this as, as painless for us as possible. But you guys, you're getting this for free. And uh, you can take this later. Um, so I was actually, I was surprised because Money in the Bank started early tonight. I didn't remember any indication that it was going to be starting an hour earlier than what it usually did. I remember seeing that advertised because the plan is now all of the pay-per-views are going to be so branded. Right. So they're all going to be a little bit longer, which means they're all going to start a little bit earlier. So this okay. should be when pay-per-views start. It was it was okay. unusual because I, I thought it started at 6. And I, I had to crash because I was up all weekend. So uh, I was asleep when it started, which is fitting because I was asleep by the time it ended wow. as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a bit of professional wrestling humor for you. He was crying through those, uh, those laughing, laughter there, kids. Don't, don't tell that. Uh, wrestling is dead, and I wish I was with it. <laughs> Now, now, you're very in the lead. Let's, let's, let's ease into this gently. It's nice, cold, cool. We don't want to shock the system. Uh, oh, don't do that to us. Oh, oh, oh. After such a great such pay-per-view, a great pay-per-view. Last night at NXT TakeOver Chicago uh, 2. Uh, that was a great, great, great show. I made the mistake of reviewing it again. Like, I watched it late last night, right. and then I got up and I watched it again today because it was so awesome. Right. That just really screwed this whole thing from the beginning. I mean, I, I set myself up even worse because last night was the best night of entertainment I'd had. I was off my tits. That was already a good start. That was a good time. Yeah, I got completely off my tits, put on Doctor Strange. So I watched Benedict Crumble Patch doing his wizards, and that was great That's fun. Great stuff. wizarding stuff. It's like Harry Potter, but like with Mads Mikkelsen in it. It's the only difference. Right, um, so that was great. Uh, I finally got PlayStation Now to work with Comcast, so I streamed Silent Hill oh, 2 for wow. a bit, played some Silent Hill 2. Best game ever, next to Bloodborne. Had a game of Fortnite, got to number two ranking wow. in my first go. Wow. So good, my hands were shaking by the end of it, and it's been a long time since a game did that. Then watched NXT. Could have ended better. Amazing. Velveteen Dream Ricochet had me screaming and cackling all night long. And that was that night. That was that night. I won't talk about the more illicit things I did, but great night of entertainment. Great, great night of great night of entertainment. Shock the system. Great night of entertainment. Um... <laughs> Listen, you're peeking out my microphones. Give me a break here. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, and then I watched Money in the Bank. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Jim. Uh, so these guys didn't get to see the opening match. I was there for it. Lucky me. SmackDown Tag Team Championship. The Bludgeon Brothers going against Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. The Good Brothers. <sighs> the Good Brothers are... And uh, I think Cannon Fodder is the nicest way to put it. Listen, those two guys are super talented guys, been around yeah. the world, you know, 
There is also Wazoo. Uh, Utterly they, they, hilarious they, they as well. Genuinely, yeah. at this point, have no concern whatsoever about holding more titles, about being the big part of the show. They like their paycheck. They are enjoying what they are doing, yeah, I mean, and I have more no problem yeah. when Vince comes to them and says, hey, I need you to do a job. They're like, gotcha. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to, <laughs> I want you to have some, some uh, hard-boiled eggs and a jar full of pickle juice, and I want you to tell people that these are people's testicles, and it's going to go over like pig musters. They're like, we got you. We'll do you one better. Can yeah. we call people nerds? We'll do it Borowski. <laughs> <laughs> They guys. just genuinely don't care no. anymore. And, and you know uh, what? Yeah. I hope one day I can get to that stage in my yeah, life where I'm like, you know what? I'll hard show to, whatever the hell you want me to do. Yeah. It's hard to blame them. Like, yeah. they're just doing their thing. Yeah. Yeah. Once you've been run through the corporate thrasher, it's hard to have any emotional highs or lows. So, you know, I think that's the idea of making them all wear the same clothes and making them all stare at the same signs and making them all do the same thing is so that they're browbeaten. Uh, From the second turnbuckle... So <laughs> stare up at the briefcases like your goldfish at feeding time. <laughs> and then forget it two seconds yeah. much like a goldfish. Wait, um, wait, there's a briefcase up there in this ladder match. Ooh, the kid. So It's we, not a wrestling promotion. It's a petting zoo. We had the Bludger Brothers, which Luke Gallows uh, was okay and, and you know everybody was fine, but then we get Harper, we get Rowan to come in, and Harper and Rowan are just they're monsters. I mean, literally monsters. These guys can move amazing speed. They're hard hitters. Some of the best workers that WWE has right now. They pin them with this great gimmick that should put them up to early Bray Wyatt, uh, early Taker levels, and it's just like a wet fart in church. Because There's it's tag nothing. team. Yeah. Because it's the tag team division, and he has the exact same feeling about the tag team from on both brands. It's Absolutely zero respect. They're on the the pre-show, and spoiler, they completely dropped the W the Raw tag yeah. team match from yeah. the from the card entirely. Yeah, that There's was no respect whatsoever, and that's the whole Wyatt family. Right, very true. That is the yeah. <laughs> true. Yeah, that is Harper. That is Rowan. That is just that is where they have gotten at this point. Uh, I, I really enjoy the Bludgeon Brothers. I've always enjoyed Luke Harper. I've been a, a, one of the few Eric Rowan fans <laughs> in the world. Uh, upside Down Sheamus. He has, he, upside Down Sheamus has not blocked me on Twitter. Give it time. Uh, <laughs> give it time. Uh, you know, so I've, I've been fans of theirs for forever. And I, like I said, that, that gimmick really works for the two of them. And it could work. But they have nobody to go against right, right. now. Yeah. There, there isn't a tag team division. No. There isn't. No. Uh, in a world where the Young Bucks and their peers are turning tag team wrestling into a phenomenon, a yeah. merch-shifting phenomenon, the, the, the idea that, you know... I mean, Vince's little mate JBL loves tag teams. You'd think he'd at least acquiesce to what he'd like to see. At least a little but bit. At home now, That's so. true. Mexico. Surrounded by his Nazi memorabilia. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah. it's Which makes funny sense. It's Which true. It just makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it honestly does. So they had a match, and it went by the books with um, Gallows getting the pin, being pinned, not getting the pin, but being pinned uh, by Harper. And, you know, they tossed them each other around, some big heavy hits. But there was nothing that you would not have seen during an episode of SmackDown. Yeah. There was nothing to differentiate this as some big pay-per-view moment. It was by the numbers. So what you're saying is it's a, it was a Money in the Bank match. It was, it, it was a yeah. pre-show. Yeah, like money a, in the Bank like match. A, I mean, it's pre-show, so you got to know that, you know, you got Gallows and it's not their job. You got, you know, Harper and Rowan, who are also have over the years been doing a job. That, that you know that <laughs> Sorry, I, I just remembered that Sammy Zayn and Bobby Lashley had a match tonight yeah, as well. <laughs> I know, I, I just, yeah. I had to laugh because I just suddenly it remembered, just suddenly yeah. I think uh, a lot of those matches tonight are going to be like that for almost mm-hmm. all the time. We just watch that. You just got to know that in a pre, pre-show type match, just they have so many restrictions on them, but there's nothing, they're yeah. not going to be allowed to do anything that's really going to blow the doors off. Yeah. My 10-year-old son 
came in at that moment and he's like, well, what are what are they doing? I explained this is Bludgeon Brothers versus Good Brothers. That's for the pre-show? Yeah. Oh. Well, they must put them out there because they're going to get the crowd hyped up. And I'm like, oh, God, I hope so, buddy. <laughs> that's what in so. in the real world where <laughs> entertainment behaves like entertainment that is what a pre-show does sure. that is what a, a warm-up act warms up the crowd it doesn't make it colder but <laughs> in wwe which doesn't stand for world wrestling entertainment anymore and that makes sense because the word entertainment should not be used in that acronym no, no, we, no. we're not going to behave how live entertainment behaves because right. that would make too much sense. So we're going to send them in pissed off and we're going to send them home pissed off. Yeah, and unfortunately... That, that's and that's kind of television. Yeah. Congratulations, kids. You're paying nine ninety nine for this a month. What yeah. colour were the Bludgeon Brothers clothes? Are we really going to get into that? <laughs> what colour were they? Go there? Okay, they were green. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Weren't they camouflage? It was kind of like somewhat, green, some kind of camouflage? awkward camouflage. Right. I'm not sure. Uh, the, the more, more of that later, folks. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. After that, the first match of the night, uh, Debray going against Big Cass and a amazingly built... <laughs> we saw that force. as well. Yeah, tour de force of, uh, of quality entertainment. It was a tour de France of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> we always we were doping on that one. Um, <laughs> I love Daniel That's Bryan. It, but is it? Yeah. Uh, I love Daniel Bryan, and I think he he is a great wrestler. And he did his best. I mean, he was trying. He was holding Big Cass's big hand through that whole thing, but yeah, we were, we were talking about it uh, to begin with, and I said, you know, if Big Cass were to drop maybe like 15 pounds around the middle, tighten up a little bit, lay off of the, of the tanning, and just start laying into that monster gimmick, I think he'd be alright. Yeah. I mean, Jim, even as you said, he's got some decent promos lately. They've actually given him a chance. He's got charisma. Yeah. He, he can talk. He's been given some rubbish material, uh, but... But but as I said as well, when you, you said he could lean into the monster thing, he's got the talent to pull off a big man cowardly heel, like a real mm-hmm. slimy Miz-esque, avoiding confrontation and sneaking in, you know, and like, like that sort of stealth predator. Right. It would be unusual, but then unusual is good because I'm <laughs> right. sick of usual. We'll take anything yeah. out of the norm right about now. Like a seven-foot coward. That's a... Sure. That's a gimmick right there. I know that the, that's alien to WWE now, but that's a gimmick. But that's also a gimmick that can have longevity yeah. if done well. That's it that's hides his weaknesses, the, and yeah. he doesn't. But, he's not impose. He's tall, but he's not imposing. Yeah. I don't, but I don't think Dan, D. Bryan is the person to do that again. No, no, I think, absolutely I think, not. I think it's possible to do that moving forward again. WWE's going to hear all of our really great ideas on our podcast. It's going to be like, oh, yeah, finally, if somebody our, is telling us how to do if this. Our one fan in Russia gets this that to the right hand. Yeah, that's right. My God. You know, it's a bot, right? Like, it's not. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Sure. Um, yeah, I think there are other people that it would be more interesting to see him do that again rather than Dan Bryan just because. Yeah. Dan Although, Bryan then again, as. as with the size difference between them, Cass being sniveling and cowardly against someone that I, I would I would find that quality entertainment because it would there's be a couple other guys. There's there's got to be some other guys who aren't that much bigger, yeah. But somehow I don't know, maybe muscular or have like some a other Bobby, thing. A Bobby Lashley. No, maybe a Lashley. Maybe. Uh, I almost even think like a Finn Balor. You got to find someone. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Balor, okay. There's Balor's got a lot of talent. There's things to be legitimately afraid of with him, even though you're seven foot tall and you yeah. could tower over the guy. He has poisoned feet. Right. Right. Yes. So if yes. he just touches somebody with the bottom <laughs> of his sole, they fall down. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, okay. Forever. I could. I could see that. <laughs> but but let's let's get back to this. So right. Oh, yeah. We gotta talk yeah. About what oh, we got to talk about the reality. I hate the reality. I'm I'm happier in my head. It was a match and it happened. 
Yeah. Um, D. Bryan got the submission with the heel hook, mm-hmm. which yeah. I think all of us expected Worked something it, like that. He, you know, Brian's doing his best to tell the story, even though the story is absurd. Uh, working the legs over and getting into the heel hook. For and the, for and the Cass, Cass tried for the life of him to get something out of the audience towards him, Ooh. but everybody was so invested in Daniel Bryan that they had no energy and no fucks to give about Big Cass. Yeah, I mean, we've already seen Cass lose to Brian already. That was the story. Yeah. The story is, you know, overcoming the big seven-footer. Brian lost since he came back. Yes. He lost against, oh, was it Rusev or Joe? It was in the Money in the Bank qualifier. I thought it was Joe. It it was Joe, I think. Oh, that was interference from Cass. Oh, yeah, I don't think he lost clean. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think there's been a, a clean loss for Daniel Bryan yet. No. So he's so he's that much closer to just starting to form. <laughs> Very possible. I hate Which all of sucks. these people yeah. who just never lose. I just hate them. I know. But and especially when there's there's real no real reason for and them. And then they not gotta to go lose. through these processes where like, oh, he really needs to earn a title shot. He he's gonna be handed title shots mm-hmm. from now until the end of time when they've like Warmed up his frozen carcass and and animated it and made it <laughs> wrestle. Walt Disney. They're gonna yes. Okay. <laughs> They're gonna Walt Disney that guy, and he's still gonna wrestle. Uh, yeah, and he'll still be safe. And he'll um, still be still be winning. Yeah, is Daniel Bryan better off now than he was as a GM? I mean, yes, he's supposedly living he's his dream. He'd say yes. Yeah, he would, but I just I don't know that in the end it's going to be worth it. I don't know. Outside of the payoff with the Miz, which is a is well, a one I, and done, I, and that's, that's gonna be a WrestleMania. That's the only thing I'm looking for. Yeah, that's the only thing that I think there is left to do. I mean, I found him crushingly boring as GM. That's the problem. I didn't find any charisma in that. It didn't help they were doing that will they, won't they, just get in a bed and screw and get it over with with Sean uh, Shane McMahon. Yeah. Um the sexual tension between them was well, incredible. Right up there with power. The yeah. Yeah. But I think Daniel Bryan's heart wasn't in that role. I mean, he said he hated it, and, and I sure. think it showed because yeah. he was just so flat. I think were they to bring back Talking Smack and he and Renee could do it as like a podcast, a, a video podcast, that I think Daniel funny. Bryan would be would be happy you know with I, that. What I found weird uh, today, and I'm trying to remember back, I, I missed a lot of the original uh Right. I came back into watching wrestling towards the end of that run. Right. Watched him retire tearfully. Yeah. Stuff. Um, so I'm trying to remember. It seems weird to me now. He's come back. He is a veteran. He's got the experience. He's sure. got all of this ring knowledge and all of this stuff that I feel like they didn't really sell him on for. He was the underdog. He was the guy. True, who yeah. Pushed down. Now he's coming back and he is a veteran. And so they, they're talking about his ring awareness versus Big Cass, who's new. You know, yeah. I think it's just a whole different feel on the character of Daniel Bryan now because they have to include the fact True. that he's so much more experienced. I don't think they could have done it any other way. way. Yeah, they, they, they kind of have to right. position him that it, way. I feel like it's a very different character. He, now he is a savvy veteran. Yeah. He, right. was, he, he was, was not that guy. Like, he was the scrappy yeah. guy throwing his body around before. So it's a very different person. And I feel like they're trying to trade off of the popularity from the scrappy guy. Sure. Trying to so fuel it into this. Like, yeah. You have to like get into get behind him as a as a veteran. When he's only he's only been out of the ring for three, three years, years. Three years. But he was never away from television, honestly. So it's not like he he went away to some dojo in yeah. the mountains of Nepal, and yeah, right. But that's who he is now. Sure. I mean, it's it's not it's not any anything they're doing different to try to sell him different. It's just that's who he is. I mean, honestly, he back, he's still the guy who's been doing it for fifteen years. I think the big problem is just that after he had his WrestleMania match, the first thing they do is thrust him into a program with Cass. I I, I feel like we'd have a very different opinion on his career right now. If he was wrestling, well, not Cass. Right, so right. I have to say that's as a veteran. Look at where um, uh, Randy Orton is right now. Which most of where is like, Randy Orton? Yeah, most of us <laughs> feel like it's really, really terrible, right? Yeah. But his role in the company is different now because he is—he's not the 
the legend killer. He's the legend. Yeah. So he can't run around being a legend killer when there are no more legends left. Well, it's also the same with Undertaker. You know, Undertaker has retired, but now that he's come back and wrestled two matches, it's not about Taker winning anymore. It's now no. the Taker greatest hits. It's Taker he's greatest gotta, hits. He's got to... He's got to walk the ropes. He's got a tombstone. Yeah. He's got to hit somebody yeah. with the snake eyes. Yep. And then he's done. And, you know, and there's no reason for him to do okay. anything else. Yeah. And so, but I mean, I think Daniel Bryan still has yet to transition into how to be that guy. Because now, like Randy Orton did, like John Cena did, uh, now Daniel Bryan has to be that guy who is the yardstick. Okay. The way that John yeah. Cena yeah. used to be. Yeah. You got to put him up against John Cena. John Cena is able to put a stamp on him. To yeah, you know, and okay. so that's that's putting him in with Big Cass. It's not about getting Daniel Bryan over; he doesn't need it. It's about figuring out what you really got with Big Cass. That's true. Yeah, that's true. true. And it, well, I think that's been figured out. Yeah. And yeah. Sadly, it may sadly. not. It may not be there yet. I mean, he he doesn't even make a bear hug look good, and that oh, all man, he needs is yeah. yeah. And I mean, that was a rest hold. Just get <laughs> facial expressions in there <laughs> oh, would have made the difference, but he just coach. stood there and hugged him. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, coach. Tells you the bear yeah. hug is a best <laughs> <laughs> for oh, the one Cooper in it. During this bear hug. Yeah. Uh, so that's all that we was, have to say about that match. Can we move that on? was a match. Bryan wins. Um, we did have a yeah. fun skit afterwards <laughs> where um, Kevin Owens was trying to strategize with the New Day, thought he'd bring him <laughs> a peace offering of a huge garbage bag. Full of pancakes, and honestly, folks, if you're gonna go watch it, just focus on Big E, and you will not be disappointed. Yeah. Except for one day. moment when Xavier Woods starts Xavier counting the pancakes, pancakes like money. Yeah. <laughs> the New Day, anytime they're together, you guys already know my my history with the New Day. I love those guys. You're wearing so, a New Day shirt right now. New Day shirt. I've got the unicorn horn. I've got the pop nice. figures over there. Uh, New Day is is my guys, but the the comedy, the improv that they're able to pull off yeah. with. Kevin Owens, who's also really good at improv, was great and a nice bit of levity. And spontaneity, oh, which, yeah. which they so sorely need. Yeah. Like, like Big E is clearly just allowed to run wild yeah. when the camera's on, no licking the pancakes. <laughs> you, on face. Yeah, <laughs> yelling, you done did it now, sucker, telling him to, what was it, get to getting? Get to getting. <laughs> If he wanted to say get to stepping and it's, it hitched in his brain yeah. somewhere, so he told him to get to getting. I mean, all three of them are a delight, but Big E is just a phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> he is too fun. good for the world. Yeah. So go, go check that out if nothing yeah. else, folks. Uh, after that, Bobby Lashley against Sammy Zayn. <laughs> I forgot again. <laughs> I've just remembered again that <laughs> happened. Yeah, drinking tonight, folks. Here's the question yeah. I'm I'm this is the first day I've been sober in <laughs> as long as I can remember. And I picked I the wish you worked. <laughs> and this is your reward. I Why quit though I, the, I chose the wrong day to quit drinking. <laughs> I'm gonna get us in the fridge. I'm gonna right now. Uh, um So the build up of this oh, yeah. some men. And drag and an obstacle course, and now we're here. Oh, right, the men in drag. It yeah, really not all about that. It yeah. was everything bad about uh, an attitude era lower mid card yeah, feud. Yeah, with none of the uh, at least some edge would have been nice. <laughs> something. Something. I never thought that something could be worse than the Bailey. This is your life cycle. Um, but it's close. It's a run for its money. Yeah. The, uh, the men in drag yeah. one was... was, was yeah. you know, it's the kind of thing that bad. makes me just look at Raw and think, this is a Monday night primetime television show. Right. Like, That's this isn't just... Action. Yeah. This isn't some side corn, like, this is, this is like fringe stars. promotion. This is not main event. Yeah. This is Raw. This is primetime television. For 25 years. 25 years. This is what they want an Emmy for. <laughs> Our reward for watching it for 25, 25 years is years. grown men in drag, one of them with a mustache. Uh, Pretending to be Bobby, Bobby Lashley. Lashley. And Sammy's It's name. bad television. That's oh, legitimacy. Anyway, this yeah. went about the way you would think it went, folks. Uh, Lashley dominates, just overruns, does all his greatest hits, and Sammy Zayn takes the lay down in the middle of the ring. Um, great. Okay, great. I mean, yeah. Why not? Why the hell not? We needed time to fill of this 
four and a half hour pay-per-view. <laughs> they, go, they do go on very long now, don't they? Speaking of going on and on. Uh, after that, we had the Intercontinental <laughs> Championship, which is not going to talk about anymore. Yeah. Going against say. Elias, and Elias yeah. got his five minutes beforehand to do. Let me ask you a question Please. before we talk about the match. What color was <laughs> Elias's pants? <laughs> they, were, they were green. Thank yeah. you. Right, moving on. Thank they you. had a really big cuff, too. Really, really big, big cuff. cuff. And no pocket. No pocket. He keeps all these guitar picks <laughs> in the cuff. <laughs> Because he ain't got the pockets, he needs the cuff. These are things that we discussed at length. It was preferable. That in and of itself yeah. should tell you how good this match was. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen Seth Rollins and Elias Live have a match, and they tore the roof off the place. It was great. This, it was just the usual sanitized muck. Yeah, and that's, and that's kind of what I was telling you when you told me you were going to the house show. I'm like, great. You're going to have a blast because mm-hmm. uh, any wrestling house show, especially WWE, they get a chance to let loose. They have some fun. They try some new things. You learn for the first time that Roman Reigns has charisma. Yeah. He's Because he's, al- he's allowed to use it because no one's looking. But not when the cameras are on. <laughs> yeah. um, so... It's, it's like the charisma that disappears as soon as the camera... Exactly, on. yeah. Some, just... some say it takes your soul. Other people say it takes your charisma. Um, Elias plays his guitar... Doesn't get the response that he wants from the audience. Cal agrees. Uh, and then Seth Rollins wants to burn it down. Yep. And he does. And this, I mean, honestly, this was a good match between the two. Elias can go. Elias has got some He doesn't really get good enough stuff. credit, I don't think. He's got some great stuff behind him. Unfortunately, that character is just not one of those things that's, that's great stuff. It still has a long way to go. And I mean, can't, we can't deny he's over. Yeah. As hell. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everything that we're told about the character is that he's useless. Sure. Whereas we, at the beginning of every match, we are told for five minutes that this guy is an idiot, is deluded, yeah. is the thing he's most invested in, he's not very good at. Because he's not really that good of a guitar player. The, the guitar is out of tune every single week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just the songs that it's he good hate. With aren't. It's it's good. I heat. think so. I don't know. People really like it. Is it good? Heat? And it's it's it's, it's like they want like it. Well, it's an odd thing because they sing along and they enjoy it, and then he busts out the, you know, the insult to the town, and they do boo it. It's almost like a, like a, a roasting comedian almost. Like they're yeah. enjoying being dumped on by him. It, but I mean, he's getting some of the loudest reactions that they're. They've been getting for their terrible garbage television program that they put out and tell us is professional. A lot of space. Like if you gave that amount of space, five minutes, like just in the quiet with a spotlight in the middle of the ring, just with a a microphone to anybody else, what could they do with that? What could what could uh, Prince Pretty do with that time? Oh. Tyler Breeze could do something yeah, with Tyler, that time. if they give him a chance. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. I mean, well, that's all true of everything yeah. in WWE. Hopefully, like these yeah. are supposed to be the best of the best. And so I don't know. I don't know. I like. I think he can go in the ring. Yeah. I I personally hate the gimmick, sure. but I recognize that the point of it is me hating the gimmick, it's much like the Iconics. I hate the Iconics. It's that hard line of, feet, yeah. But then that's what they're supposed to do. But I do exactly. genuinely hate them. I hate it when they come on my television. But it's you look at... Just, it's you not look just, Elias. oh, what a great heel. I, I've i seen great right. heels, and I love their work. Right. I love when Kevin Owens is on my television, uh, and he's a, he's a heel I'm supposed to hate. Yeah. Yeah, but I love it when he's on my television. But it's that line Most between... I genuinely hate watching. Yeah. Like some people use he like heelishness to justify anything, and that's not really. If they hate it for the wrong reasons, of course, then it's not good. And there's this thin line between an effective heel and just bad TV. Mm-hmm. And I recognise that for some, Elias and especially the Iconics can tread that line. Um, I like Great the Iconics, yeah. and I they do make me grip my teeth. <laughs> but I love Peyton Royce especially. I think she's oh, very Peyton talented. Is, Absolute star. The gimmick is, I mean, it's 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 on that line of is this yeah. bad, cringy TV 
genuinely, or is this good heat? I don't know with them. Right. With Elias, I'm all, I'm personally on the side of I think that's that's a hot gimmick. I think personally, Elias has got a great build. He's fast. He's got some good moves when they actually give him a chance to showcase them. When he's not being chumped out, right. yeah. And putting up against. Uh, putting but him up I against feel Seth like Rollins was with a good that idea. as a gimmick, we're we're spending a lot of time making him out to be a chump. Yeah. And then he has to overcome that with what's happening in the ring, and by the end of the match, you're going, "Oh wow, this actually is a pretty good wrestler guy." And then he comes out the next week, and you're like, "Oh god, that guy's here." Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And and he has no to stain. get over that. Every no time. I mean, I would. I... With any other gimmick, I think he'd be a really great wrestler. I think he's looked stronger in this feud with Seth than he has at any other time. Certainly wow. better than that thing he had with Braun Strowman. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely, he was there to get squashed by. Yes. Literally, literally, literally. Sometimes even after winning a match when they're not in a feud anymore, just <laughs> out he comes, just clobbers him. Yeah. <laughs> because screw you, Elias. Right, so both much. of them come out looking really, really good. Uh, there was some good storytelling, uh, Seth playing the knee, yeah. which... Oh man, I just I know, get to the place it. I, I do hate too. it because of it. They're, they're legitimate injuries. And I spent all of this time genuinely worried about, I'm like, oh crap, am I going to have to lose Seth Rollins oh, yeah. Yeah. once again? Right. And that's where my heart is going. And I'm not in this match between these two guys. Yeah, same with Daniel Bryan. You look at him and you're like, geez, geez don't land on your don't land on your right. neck. Dive to Please. the outside, land on your yeah. head. And you're like, oh, don't gosh, pull a big well, e. he's, well, he's gone for three years. <laughs> so, yeah, they're... And that's one of the. I think that's also one of the problems with the death of kayfabe, as it were, in the WWE. Is you know Vince finally said, okay, yeah, you guys can have social media. You can actually be heels and faces can ride in the same car. You guys can actually be friends on on real life. And that's the problem is because we become so invested in these wrestlers as people outside of their characters that when we know the legitimacy of the injuries and things like that, it takes us away. From the fantasy that is it's a, wrestling. It's another layer that's going on. Yeah, absolutely. We're genuinely concerned about them as people mm-hmm. instead of as characters. Right. It's yeah. just an, an extra I think it's a problem. It's hard to navigate. Yeah. I think it's an issue as you get older as well, because sure. I'm keenly aware of the bits of me that hurt. Right. <laughs> so now when I see them do a suicide dive or even some simple spots, even just simple bumps sometimes, I'm just like, oh, no. You know, the, because the, I know they'll feel it in the morning. The spot last <laughs> night in NXT, the, the table spot at the very end with Gargano and Ciampa. You're, I think all of us are sitting there going, that is really going to hurt. That's yeah. really going to hurt. They're really close to being... Completely injured, and so yeah, it does. It does take you away. Well, think. then we we've also got to talk about the what the product is allowing them to do in terms of telling a story because Gargano Champa was just so emotional and so involved yeah. that I really I still had some thoughts. You know, some of the less KFAB thoughts while watching, but I was too busy caring about. These guys trying sure. to kill each other yeah, in story, right. yeah. yeah. Um, and that's when they're allowed to tell a real story. That's the difference between I'm sitting here just thinking about who's going over and mm-hmm. who's going to get injured and what the writing team are doing. A truly great match with truly great storytelling behind it, leading in and within the match will still make that stuff disappear. There's a reason why heels, unless they're at the Undisputed Era, still get booed by the NXT sure. ca- crowd because people will play along with kayfabe if there's something worth playing along right. with. Exactly. If you have a build-up like a Muscle Chumpa and Johnny Gargano where you have a year in the making, mm. all these subtle things going on on social media, in the ring, outside of the ring, that really make the Dana Ma such an amazing thing as it was last night when it's, yes. it's not even over yet. But we're talking about good wrestling. Let's talk about the wrestling we watched tonight. <laughs> Let's talk uh, about WWE. Where, 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 where small detail things play into the story. Like, yes. Like uh, Velveteen Dream wearing pants that look like uh, Ricochet's character, mm-hmm. um, Prince Puma. Yeah. Uh, Wait, from, they're his, from his. They, they're the same <laughs> Jesus, person. I never knew. I'm sorry. I just the tattoos never gave it away. Never. Uh, where a, a costume choice there yeah, tells part of the story. Subtlety and yeah, being everybody wear green because it's money. Uh, All this to say, folks, that Seth Rollins retains <laughs> the Intercontinental Championship against Elias. 
and I'm sure we're going to hear more about it tomorrow night. Um, I love it when Elias wins, though, just because you very rarely hear the down, 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 It's a great little tune. I hate that gimmick. I hear that song. You know, it's the same with Aiden English. I've seen Aiden English win once. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Elias. The bells and tones of JoJo. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Aiden English has great music too. You just never hear it. Yeah, I just I love the. Uh, the oh, <laughs> I miss that stuff. Uh, after that, we had the women's Money in the Bank, where we had Alexa Bliss, Sasha Banks, Ember Moon, Natalia, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Naomi, and Lana. Got a couple questions. <laughs> <laughs> How green was Ember Moon's entrance? Super green. Completely green. Super green. <laughs> And was a whole bunch of the women in the match wearing green? So much green, Jim. Right. Okay, it's now appropriate. Lana had blue. Lana had blue. Some of them were allowed... Yeah, yeah. The the authority allowed them different colours, some of them. Alexa Bliss did not have any green. Alexa was true. She was normal. Bliss here. Uh, Talia. I feel like it might be denoted by how much the... uh, but how much management cares about them and is invested in them that they're like, okay, you get to wear normal colours. The rest of you, put your uniforms on. (laughs) Put your uniforms on, stare up at the briefcase, point at the WrestleMania sign. When Survivor Series comes around, you're all going to say that it's the only time of the year that we meet up. Now, get up on those ladders. Yes, you, Kevin Owens. I know it's completely out of character. I know it's weird that you would stand on a series of different sized ladders all together. (laughs) It's North Korea. WWE is North Korea, where they've all been browbeaten into submission. They all think the same, they talk the same, they look the same, they act the same, they now dress the bloody same. I remember, right, and I don't want to sound like one of these old bitter men. Jim, what do you remember? <laughs> but I remember when wrestlers weren't just one wrestler. I remember when they were different. Sure. There were different wrestlers with different costumes and barbers. gimmicks. You had voodoo guys. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At the very least, they didn't all dress up like the pay-per-view that they were on. Why are you cosplaying as the pay-per-view you're on? Yeah. It's North Korea. It's a dictatorship. These people should be freed. No, no blood for royal. Not my president. <laughs> Not my money in the bank. Let my wrestlers go. Uh, <laughs> folks, one thing you need to watch through this whole entire pay-per-view is Natalia. She is on some next-level pharmaceuticals because if you watch her in this, the beginning, she's just staring off somewhere. Not even at the briefcase. She's staring off just blinking blankly. And then later when she's in the locker room with Ronda while Ronda's warming up, Natty's just blinking her eyes feverishly as if she has seen some type of spectral... Did somebody tell her her career trajectory for the next few months? Because normally you get that glassy eye when WWE management tell you their plans for you. By the way, you're still the crazy cat lady. It makes sense after the match, because she took some pretty nasty dingers to the noggin. Sure. Into the the uh, the stairs. I think it was yeah. Lana put her into the yes. stairs. And like, that was not a good throw. Uh, there was a couple other spots well. where she just looked <laughs> She looked like she took shots to the head several times. Yeah, and you feel bad because Natty is one of those ring generals, as we've spoken about before, but one of those that she's, just, she's never going to get the accolades that she sorely deserves. But overall, for a women's money in the bank, including weaponry like ladders, the women did fairly well. There was a couple of really big spots where I cringed. There were a lot of nice landings, spots. But overall, it was not a bad event. It was fast-paced. And I'm okay with the, with the ending, too. I love that Alexa got yes. the briefcase, and there was a lot of lead-up to it, some, some false runs, and I, I think it was fine. I think it was probably one of the better matches and conclusions that we saw throughout the night. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a... Uh... It was a victory that was hard to be too disappointed by, even if there were other people you might feel deserve it or need it more. Definitely the um, crowd was behind Becky. Yeah, the they were last yeah, year as well. Pretty yeah. Deep, deep I mean, right now, what what is her gimmick and story is she knows Charlotte Flair. That's it. <laughs> yeah, she knows, deep, yeah. She, is, she has orange hair. 
We yeah, know her preference of beverage. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Ember Moon had a really good showing, I think, tonight. Ember will continue to showcase some really good stuff. I like Ember a lot. I think Sasha Banks took some stiff hits, especially mm. from Ember. Ember did a lion salt onto Sasha on a ladder that was really rough. Um, Charlotte was Charlotte. Okay, great. She ran under the ladder a couple of times. Yeah, she speared... Uh, somebody. Yeah, she tried to do a spear the through the lad, and, and it, there was just wasn't enough room to sell it. Yeah, so she basically she just had to lift, to and yeah, yeah. I think um, whoever it was who took it more or less just had to jump backwards onto the ladder, and it was a bit too obvious that that was yeah, going on. Took some pretty gnarly hits on the ladder. Lana was there. She slid down the front of it. Yeah, the splits on it. There's a couple other weird, weird splits. Yeah, I, I had, I, you know. I have been fairly vocally against Lana for forever. Yes, you have. Uh, especially as a an in ring performer, just uh, it's sure it's it's, 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 rough. it's rough. I think she what you're forgetting stepped up and took the spots. And yeah. got slammed onto a ladder, and I'll I will give it up. For she that. didn't lose her weave. She did not lose her weave this time. Yeah. So Lana is the kudos. best, though. At, Lana's number. She's one. She's number one. one. That's yeah. yeah. I've heard That's that. a rumor going around that I, she's the best the and number one. A, no. I like Lana. I I've got a fondness for Lana. Sure. That's fun. There's nothing wrong with having fun. I don't think she's a great wrestler, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm fond of her as a talent. <laughs> um, so, yes, Alexa Bliss wins the Money in the Bank briefcase. More on that later. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, we had... You know what? Arts Church. Uh, Roman Reigns and Jinder <laughs> Mahal. That was a match that we watched. With a barn burner. <laughs> we watched I got it the again. Whole thing from the beginning <laughs> to with, the end. With such great chance as, this is awful, CM Punk in this match, boring, and NXT. All nice. Those were heard by me. There was also a very big Mexican wave going on. Yes. They were really into the Mexican really wave. Into Super it. into um, it. I mean, I've, I've talked across the internet about my views of Roman Reigns and how unfair I think it is that he's put in that position by the company. I think it's disgraceful. I honestly do think it's disgraceful. It's confusing television that doesn't make sense. And his mental health cannot be great being told he's the hero and treated like that by the crowd. And sure. it's not the crowd's fault, I don't think, um, because they have every right to react to garbage TV. It's not Roman's fault. He's, it, it's unfair. It is unfair to Roman. Yeah, and I and I can agree because as you were saying earlier, you know, when you get Roman on a podcast or you get Roman in a house show, yeah. there is charisma. There is a guy there, not this Cena-esque automaton who just has his, his myriad of catchphrases that he'll throw out and we're expected to buy into it. Do. Yeah. But honestly, you know, the other day I was out mowing the yard and some little kids across the street was saw me wearing a New Day shirt. I have seven of them. <laughs> um, and they, we started talking about wrestling. I said, as always, well, who's your favorite wrestler? And two of the three kids said Roman Reigns, and one of the kids said Gloria. Which I, which I, <laughs> I agree. It's, um, the amazing. So obviously, the you know, there's, he's still selling merch. He's still yeah. doing all these things. Great. I hope he's getting a good kickback. But yeah, as far as character development, as far as longevity upon his own accord, I don't see it happening. We're at the point of open hostility. It's kind sure. of a professional abuse. Yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, yeah. I think yeah. it, I, you know, I take mental health fairly seriously, and um, nah, yeah. that's was, just not good for anyone. I can't. Put anybody through that. Yeah, I took We go, we went. We've gone past die, Rocky die. We've gone past yes. s- skidding past that. I don't know where we are. Yeah. No, it's it's rough. And then, you, unfortunately, you throw them in there with Jinder Mahal. And Jinder Mahal is well, they're, a they're, at The best. whole goal at this point, their whole thing, is to try to find all of the people that the audience might hate yeah. worse than Rome. Why they keep sure. putting them up against Brock. Yeah. Because people pretty genuinely hate Brock Lesnar because he never shows up, because he's yeah. got the record for the longest... Uh, title run 30 years by never showing up. Yeah. Uh, they, so the, the, like, that's there. Uh, Jinder Mahal has been good at getting genuine heat 
Sure. And he getting people to hate him. Uh, was there somebody else that he was wrestling pretty recently? And it's it was oh he did a little thing with Elias for a little bit, didn't he? I think there was some brief flirtation with that. Yeah, it it wasn't long, but it was trying to find all of the people who have done a decent enough job to genuinely have the audience boo them. And here's the problem. they'll boo them more than they'll boo Roman. What they haven't worked out is if you put someone the crowd hates in a ring with someone the crowd hates... You don't get them just liking one of the oh, others by accident. You get indifference. Cheery, yeah. Yeah. You get Mexican yeah. waves and CM Punk chants. Mm-hmm. Probably uh, a beach ball. Yeah. We, we were and the wave. And, yeah. and all of the No pun intended. They've got no dog in the fight. And um, why would they be invested in that? Why care? Just go ahead and intend it because it's wonderful. <laughs> no, I'm with you. Um, so it, it, this one was another one of those, you know, paid by numbers. And pretty much, you know, gender getting in the heel uh, push, and then you know Roman getting the shine, and then ended it with the Superman punch, and then a spear, and one, two, three, and now and punch the guy in, in a wheelchair. Yeah, that's yeah. what your face does. <laughs> what you're um, I mean, how many more times are we going to have that same feud as well? Because what after Jinder, what's going to happen? Someone else will come along and bully him for several weeks and we're supposed to think he's badass as he gets his ass handed to him every week on bad television. Yeah. And then he will just be bullied again for the whole match at a pay-per-view. Superman punch, more eel mouth, spear, wins. Yep. Everybody goes home miserable. Miserable and crying. Um, so, yeah, it was a match. Roman moves on to face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. Gender moves on to fight. Who cares? Bobby Roode. Bobby, It'll be Bobby Roode, Jinder Mahal, and no one will somebody, care. Somebody will, somebody will genuinely believe can wave the American flag. Because, because it, you know, July's coming up. Oh, absolutely. Oh, uh, yeah. have a, a fair amount of time of that. And that's the... Like, I don't mind Jinder Mahal too much. But when they start doing the tired foreign heel stuff yeah. and the whole... Let's just boo India because it's not America. I mean, at least at least when they play on the Russian thing, it would make some sense. Although I don't think Vince would do that now. No, not, that not now. with his wife in such a prominent position within the cabinet. Um, yeah, but that's where you know you got guys like Mustafa Ali who's doing some good stuff out there and not right. having to be the the heel. But then you also have you know um, a couple other people still. Stuck with gimmicks and yeah, you know. I mean, you could do you can do heel versus heel. You just need phenomenal charisma for that. But you just get someone they genuinely hate with someone they hate as a heel and it indifference. Yep. After that, we had the SmackDown Women's Championship, Carmella against Asuka. I think with the bi- a surprise yes. guest appearance by the Ghost. The okay. bigger match here was Carmella versus her outfit. That was the match I was interested in, because part of her was swallowing that leotard. It was it was pretty rough to watch with those. those I s- three, three tense darker games yeah. and everything. I saw her correct herself about four times, but I'm fairly certain she did it more than that. She was more, yeah. just didn't notice it. Um, and it's a tough match to to watch because there's no genuine way you can believe that Carmella. As the character of Carmella can yeah. and hold a candle to the character of Oscar. There's just yes. nothing. There's yeah, nothing. Absolutely. There's no way in the world. I think that that, that is why this, a certain thing that happens in this match is a good thing because that's, that's how she wins. That's her believability yeah, is that exterior hand. You know, right. it's her Miztourage, her Singh Brothers. Yeah. Sure. It's that entity. <laughs> yeah, so basically what happens is we have a, a fairly decent match by both. I mean, Carmella is actually coming into her own. Unlike she's, Cass, she's yeah, showing herself she's improving. Some really good improvement. Asuka is still doing great. Um, but then at the end of the match, we see this hooded figure dressed as Asuka come to the ring. With the mask. With the mask yeah. on. Um, I don't know where it came from. Was it over the over the wall? Was it from the audience? Where did it must, come from? It did just sort of manifest. From under the ring, who knows? Um, so Oscar, We joked earlier about there being somebody under the ring. We did, there yes. There was legit sure someone enough, under the ring. There was legit somebody under the ring. Uh, is transfixed by this character. She doesn't know what the hell's going on. Uh, Carmella tries one sneak attack, gets thwarted, tries another one after 
The mask is ripped off to show the returning James Nochin Ellsworth. And Oscar's never met him before in, in the show, so it makes sense because the moment you look at him, I'd be transfixed, <laughs> especially with that wink he tried. Oh, the, the double-eyed wink. That's probably how Carmelo won, is Oscar was too busy thinking, was that a, a wink, a twitch, a, a nervous tick? I don't know what that was. Uh, Carmelo was like slightly above the hairy <laughs> patch. Is that a mouth? What is that? Unless is an oviposter? Old cinema has seen freaks before. I'm not sure that she understood what was before, but Carmela is able to get off a fine extended kick to the dome and pins Oscar for the three it count. It doesn't make any sense here, story-wise. Is why do you take off the mask before Carmela wins? Because you're James Ellsworth. James Ellsworth. Because that that would confuse anybody. You have the distraction. And it sure as hell did. You have the distraction. Kick her, get her down, and her, and then reveal. Oh, no, I get that. But again, if you're James Ellsworth, of course you take the mask off. <laughs> there is a scene... Well, not only did he interfere, but he interfered in such a poor way. Oh, God. It was Here's bad. the thing. It's a poor way if you've not seen Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Because there's a scene where Jason... It's a great film. Jason (laughs) kicks this gang's boombox across the street in Manhattan when he's chasing someone. Absolutely does. The gang is upset. They've got issues with Mr. Voorhees. So they call him out. And we, it's a great shot. They don't, no. Hey, you, Mr. Voorhees. Um, I demand recompense for this machinery. These D batteries did not come cheap, sir. Um, so Jason Voorhees stops this gang, but he's it. Jason Voorhees wants to kill one particular woman because she was at Crystal Lake. Probably furious. He's pissed. So he's chasing her through Manhattan, ignoring hundreds of victims. It's great. Walks through a gang, kicks their boombox. They, you know, knives out, ready to do him. He turns around, the camera is shot from behind Jason. He turns around, lifts his mask. The gang just runs and he just carries on chasing the woman. That is why James Ellsworth taking his mask off and then using that, using his face to get Carmela to win. That's why it's the Voorhees defense. It's the best way to end a match. <laughs> Please, they should quit. They should definitely quit. So this means we have James Ellsworth back in the camp with Carmel. I'm happy enough for it. And I want to see Dog... I want to see the dog collar back. (laughs) I want to see her slap him and then kiss him because I'll, I'll be perfectly honest... I like Carmella, and that was perfectly good. And that was good television. That was good television. (laughs) Put the collar back on. Ninety-five for that. It sure as hell was. I'm (laughs) happy to pay that and never get a free month, even though I've been a day one subscriber. After that, (laughs) uh, Carmella and James saunter up the uh, the aisle. James is pumping in the air, and all is right in the world. And then we get. AJ Styles going against Shinsuke Nakamura in a last man standing match. <sighs> Wrestling's dead. Did you hear that? Wrestling is dead. Jim Cornette's right. The business has been killed. Corny knows all and speaks all. Um, this really should be one of the matches that we were excited about. See, sure. I mean, this it be- was at WrestleMania oh, before I saw it. <laughs> All of the matches from yeah. from Takeover last night that we were super excited mm, about seeing yeah. because they're two competitors who really tear the doors off the place. That's who these guys are. That's what they can really do. That's what they're doing. And yeah. oh my gosh, just what a debacle this was of what these guys can do. Yeah. Again, like we're back to that place where you're talking about Roman Reigns and the company shit is like liable yeah. for the abuse that they're putting this guy through. That what they're doing to us as an audience through withholding everything that is great about what could be a knockout. It's Styles. it's vandalism. <laughs> it is wrestling vandalism. They have this good thing, and they are purposefully ruining ruining it. What is that if not 
the act of a vandal who should be in the jail. Sure. I mean, we expected crotched kicks. We expected things to be destroyed, uh, but not necessarily our hopes yeah. and dreams being dashed upon the rocks. Um, the fact Nakamura didn't win it is ludicrous. It's yeah, absurd. It no sense. Now, yes, it was a hell of a thing with AJ. Uh, bashing through the, the announce table and everything like that, but just, there was no, there was no joy in Mudville. You know, we, we all knew what was coming. We kind of hoped for something better, i.e. Nakamura winning and getting a belt to further his heel tactics. But no, we're still stuck with AJ Styles. There's the great, strong style work that could have come, that could have been. Sure. Just, none of it was there. But it, there it were, none, of the, none of the speed, the none of the power, no, none, of the, none of the excitement of it. I mean, just it was melted down into something that is just a shadow of what it yeah. could have been. And just think about that. WWE actively choose to produce a lesser product. They actively choose to put on worse television. I don't understand that. I simply don't understand it. There's... There has to be a belief that the American audience, and not I'm not talking about the American wrestling, the typical American television who they hope will show up for pay-per-views, and I don't Please. know why <laughs> they would. I feel like I understand this more when it's Raw and SmackDown, free television, you know, yeah. on the table, uh, that... that you know, anybody could flip channels and accidentally watch. You cannot accidentally watch Money in the Bank, regardless of how many times they're going to advertise friggin' money. money, 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 money. While we're watching Money in the Bank. Yeah. 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 I've never understood that. I, what? Never. I did yeah. is the, they were advertising it so hard, half the roster were wearing bloody green. So, really? but I feel like there is a belief that the casual American television viewer who may watch some of this material will not be capable no. of appreciating the kind Patriot of thing that the style. that strong style. It's what, a what patronizing, ludicrous belief. Wants yeah. To, absolutely. Yeah. Did. But I think it then carries over. Like that's the style of what they do on Raw and on SmackDown. And so when they go to prep the thing for Money in the Bank or for WrestleMania, they're still preparing shades of what What's they're this doing. Average like, milk toast. And that's also why, like on NXT, we still get UK division guys coming in fighting. We still get a lot of the Japanese strong style coming in because the NXT audience can handle it. And appreciates it to a to a larger extent. We were we were watching, as like I said, we were rewatching Takeover earlier today. First match, Undisputed Era versus uh, uh but yeah. And, and and I I commented to uh one of my kids watching the show. I was like, how many replays have you seen during? Yeah, and, right. And there were like literally two replays during the whole match. Because the whole thing went too fast yeah. to have replay. Sure. There were two spots jumping over the rope and one other one that went to the outside where yeah. there was enough time to have a replay. Right. The rest of it was first time viewing. We're watching it and it's going so fast you almost have a hard time processing it because it's going so quick. And I'm a wrestling viewer. Yeah. <laughs> if, right. if a casual person watching the thing, or, you know, they're thinking, dear God, let somebody stumble on this thing <laughs> for the first time ever, especially since we're giving it away for free for the first month, not to the way people yeah. who paid for the yep. whole time, just the new people, <laughs> that if somebody chimes in for the first time for free, they need to be able to follow it enough to be able to get hooked. Sure. Yeah. And it's just such a misguided... Thing. I think so, because yeah. I, even when I'm watch, showing my kids and they've been watching wrestling a little bit, they'll see something I'm watching not ever not as nearly as much as I do. But uh, and they can tell the difference yeah. in yeah. watching the Ricochet than watching I think right. I think right. a lot of it is a, a from a business perspective because you know, outside of talking about wrestling, I talk about video games as as, you know, my day job and you look in, uh, there are similarities 
you see when big corporations handle entertainment is everything is so focus tested and focus groups are useless because a focus group will tell you they want one thing but what they buy is completely different um you know malcolm gladwell has talks on this you know people will tell you they want a rich dark roast when they buy coffee they'll buy the breakfast blend but they'll say they want a rich dark roast because it sounds good. Right. You right. can't rely on that. It sounds strong. Yes, because it sounds good, yes. Americans, we want it to sound strong. Yeah. And I don't... I, and, 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 no, absolutely. And we also will believe... Um, I, I actually work with coffee roasts from time to uh-huh. time. And, uh, and, and we will also believe that that is the most uh, caffeine oh. coffee. And it is the reverse. Yeah. You roast it for longer, you are roasting caffeine out of it. It is the weaker... Of the caffeine, caffeine yeah. thing, it is the strong flavor. It is the weakest um, caffeine. But yeah, so, you can't rely on what focus groups tell you. No idea what and in about. in general, a company will like make a focus group based on what they already want to hear. So it's it's why you see so many game publishers just get fans of Call of Duty. Right. And then just make one of those and expect it to sell as much of Call of Duty. It won't because people already have that game. And it's the same I feel here. I feel like they must focus test this stuff and overproduce it as a result and suck out all of the spontaneity from it to the point where, you know, it looks like St. Patrick's Day out there because they're all wearing green and everyone's doing the same stuff and nothing escalates. I mean, this match was a perfect example of that. The amount of times they set up a really impressive looking spot, oh, yeah. faked yeah. out of it, and gave a less impressive spot. And that's that feels like that yeah. feels like the story of Shinsuke versus AJ. Like Constant expecting of good, and then we get a lesser uh, version. Up a table, getting ready for a right. super, mm-hmm. uh, 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 yeah, suplex. They're gonna do a superplex on yeah. Under the table faked it out and set up the table in the corner, and AJ ran into it. Yeah. Like it just they yeah. sold us. On a really impressive spot. Yeah. Deliver and if, a weaker if some of those spots are too dangerous, I'm fine with that. They Safety don't first. Don't it. tease it. Yeah. <laughs> Just have him go through the table the first time. People will be plenty impressed with that. Because mm-hmm. And again, it will look spontane- uh, spontaneous. It won't look overly staged and carefully set up, which all of this stuff all does. I used to love Last yeah. Man Standing matches. Yeah, there was they some used to be great. Stuff back then. And the, yeah, and the I quit. All that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. This I'll say a positive spot, though, was A, the run across the three announced desks for the Kinshasa. The I thought that was nice. Yeah. yeah. And um, his sniveling. The yeah. cowardly yeah. sniveling from he Shinsuke came when came he was, he did a couple and spots and like that and his facial the, expressions. The, uh, the, the, yeah. After, after begging for, for mercy. That he played the sniveling coward really well throughout that yeah, match. Absolutely. So, yeah, it, we're going to get more, folks. Buckle in. There's going to be probably at least two more of these coming down the pipeline. You think Great two more? Us. Yeah, I do. I don't know. <sighs> you don't think this was the end of it? Like, you've had AJ wins them all. I don't care. I no longer care. And that's Shinsuke fine. as the heel Shinsuke is ruined right now. Yes, he is wrecked. I agree with that. He's yeah. wrecked. Yep. He would have to come back on SmackDown and r- just demolish AJ in some manner that would motivate AJ to want to put the title up again. Shinsuke Nakamura comes out of the ring, grabs the microphone, and says to AJ's face, Then he just drops the mic and slowly slinks back through. I, I know. I'll tell you what would get it. Damn you <laughs> the <laughs> gay community that would yeah, it, finish him it, off. Of course, like a Monty. My guy can't be over the way. Well, we ain't got them around here. Uh, <laughs> after that, we we had the match that none of us remembered. <laughs> The Raw Women's Championship with Ronda Rousey when going against Nia Jax. Came with the graphic, we all went oh, oh, my jaw oh dropped. My God. I totally forgot that that was a thing that we were going to yeah. watch. Nope. Ronda no, Rousey memory. versus Nia Jax. She's not like most girls. The un what is it? This is the 
Unstoppable force? What is? She's the unstoppable force, Nia She's Jax. the unstoppable force. Sure. Why is, she, why is she? And she was pretty stoppable this yeah. evening. Be Better bear hug than Cass, though. On the planet. Who can't stop smiling. Who can't stop smiling. I mean, that's... Can't tie her shoes. Mmm, that lace. Uh, I, I said during the match I wanted Tommaso Ciampa to run in with the bowl cutters and just snip those laces off. <laughs> <laughs> He waves better than Ronda Rousey does. Oh. She comes out like she's a special guest appearance still. And, and she it, is. You know, she is. But Do you believe you, any of the articles I'm seeing recently where she's probably gone by next person? I'd say yes, because she continues to talk about how she wants to have a family immediately with her husband. All while under WWE contract right now so that leads me to believe mm. that yeah I think she's going to be a timed attraction and then she's going to be gone I don't think you get a lot out of Ronda outside of a couple of really quick specials. yeah and uh, she's already not living up to what we were told that oh she's a full active member of the roster gonna be I mean yeah still just complete lesbian, attraction she's still not not really showcasing anything so Ronda comes out Looking like a, she just got off a shift over at Twin Peaks and wearing Roddy Piper's big jacket. And <laughs> so I'm big her hand was disappearing jacket. under get the sleeve. A jacket that fits. I get that he gave you one. I don't even think she's wearing the one he gave her. I think it's another one. I think that's too special. You're going to wear that every time. You put that in a shadow box. You're going to get that thing. But here's the it. thing. If I, wore, if I wore every piece of clothing I was just given, I would be in jail right now for indecent exposure. <laughs> I just think, I mean, I get the idea. <laughs> Wear the leather jacket. Get one that fits you. Yeah, I hear you. You look like a schoolgirl. It's a work, she's brother. Just say it's Roddy's fucking jacket. Or a leather jacket that fits her. That's ridiculous. It's true. It's true. Um, I mean, this one, honestly, it was more about Nia just kind of carrying her through, literally, in I a couple of I the spots. scariest sentence I've ever heard. Yeah, I know. Nia Jax no, you want is, the, is the person who is carrying a <laughs> lesser experienced talent Here's the scarier one. Uh, Tamina. Tamina has been working longer. I She's not as good. She has been doing this longer. <laughs> Anyway. I vaguely remember Tamina. <laughs> That's all anybody does is vaguely admit she's still part of the roster. Yeah. Um, so Rousey tried to pull some some wrestling stuff. That didn't work for her. Then she went back to the well of the MMA stuff. And that looks a lot better because she's actually comfortable and confident doing MMA yeah. moves. And so her strikes, her holds, her... Uh, I mean, she took Nia Jax down a couple of times. Was a couple of she took herself <laughs> down once. That <laughs> fall yeah, out the ring. Yeah. Out the ring. Um, oh, when she. <laughs> yeah, when she went when back. She, and that was a nasty she drop. Go lean against the ropes and just went Roll right went through there. the bottom in the <laughs> second. She is just zoop, gone. The ropes said no. <laughs> oh lord. Um, There's no cage when, here. You will go through those ropes. Right, yeah, but that's when uh, Naya went to the outside and gave her that great spot where she ragdolled her up against oh, the barrier. Yeah. God, I love that. That was a fun, that's yeah. Like my that's my favorite fun. move that Naya does because she's the only person who's big enough who can pull that off with all these tiny little women. Yeah. Oh, it's just so great. And I loved that it happened to Rhonda. And speaking of tiny little women, yes. uh, towards the end of the match, uh, Rhonda has got Naya down with an arm bar. She's wrecking it in. And then Rhonda decides that she's going to get up and go do a crossbody. She pulls a crossbody, pins down, and suddenly the twisted five feet of bliss comes running down the aisle with her money in the big briefcase and decides to start laying people out with the briefcase first. Very smart move. Uh, lays Rhonda out, gets to the outside, starts laying out Nia Jax, goes back out to the outside to make sure that Rhonda stays away with a couple hits. Comes in, cashes the money in the bank. Well, first she she brushes the briefcase against Naya a few times yes, just to make sure yeah. she's good and weakened. Yeah, and, and Naya cannot sell a hurt arm for anything. <laughs> and yeah, well, not when it's a crap hit like like. I know it was. They were really bad, protected mile difference. When I play with my dog, I like we <laughs> hit each other hard. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> like I've got a my pillow. I like you know, swing it at him and he'll jump out the way and everything. And I hit harder than she hit with that briefcase. The forgiveness I'll give there is I am not sure that the selling that Naya was doing on her left hand was not was, legit. Was not legit. 
It could be. Which means that when Alexa is hitting her with the briefcase, she's hitting her on her injured hand. And if Possibly. Alexa knows that, then that we hit going against the hand. Um, that yeah, that can make sense. Injured, it, it, yeah, we'll see in a we'll couple see. of days. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, she, the way she was working that and the way the ref was Maybe. working at her looked like it could be a legit thing. Possibly a fractured uh, wrist, something may have happened. But swinging a briefcase like that, unless you're actually going to swing it, is not advised anyway. Like, it's no, best to it hold it with both hands and it. bash with it. And just, so and just hit another part of her. There's a lot of, yeah. well, there's a lot of knives. I mean, yeah, if you it's swing it, you can do it in the, you know, the, the, the shoulder, meat of the back or something, yeah. Thigh, just something, um, just don't hit her hand. Yeah, so anyway, Alexa finally gets Nia down. Uh, performs a, uh, a twisted bliss off the top rope. It gets the pin. So now Alexa Bliss is the new returning women's champion, and I'm I'm glad I'm yeah. good with it. I and call, like call me a cynic that. though, but it does mean everyone get, uh, talks about that and focuses on that. Sure. So no one analyzes the Nia Jax Ronda Rousey match yeah. too hard. And, and, and yeah, I think that's probably pretty smart in the long run. But yeah, Alexa's got the belt back. But she does a lot of good, fun stuff with it. I'm okay with it. But you gotta know, you gotta know, as the producer of this segment, that this isn't very. I would think but you so. gotta, you gotta know. And and that's why you. I mean, they like, certainly. In and get them talking yeah. About Alexa taking the title or whatever else. He gave that much time. Again. To a it's the company knowingly putting out. But the raw tag. Yeah, yes. No, no B team versus um, um, the, the leaders of. The and I would have loved to have seen Woken Matt Hardy's green long coat. It would have been great. Knows. He yeah. paid good money. For yes. The green coat. You know he did. He probably the streak. The in white. His hair. I was say the white streak. The streak would have been great. <laughs> like a like a bad. The bad B team shirt thing. that they marked with with a magic marker. Is a green shirt. They were green. Mm-hmm. You no, know they would have been glorious. Why was that cut? Place in Gosh, which we see it you tomorrow. Kn- you know, because that match will be tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That you took match. time away from actual thing. Yeah. And gave it to a match that wasn't very good. And capped it with something that would get us talking about something else. Yeah. The match that was and you, you you took away a, a at least a a few weeks would have been nice of Bliss trolling with that sure. suitcase, uh, a yeah, suitcase that's briefcase that's the rather. Real, the real loss. Here yeah. Is that w- the amount of pay that could have been made by Alexa Bliss? Yeah. She could have done the job that Carmella was incapable of giving us last year. I. Uh, Carmella now, because of a year of doing mm, poor to middling trolling, yeah. is much better at doing now. If she yeah. had the briefcase now, I guarantee she would be better. Yeah. But she still wouldn't be as great as Alexa was going to be. I mean, well, I mean, Alexa's role is that exactly. snotty yeah. heel is so good. It would have been so good, but we get nothing. Yeah. I mean, we, <laughs> we get her with the belt, which is good. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I'm not. It, it's hard to be angry at Bliss with the belt. Right. But she looked so good holding that briefcase. The way she holds her belt. Yeah. That's and fun. it was a good on. sign of what we could have had. Yeah. Um. And so then finally, the last match of the night was the men's Money in the Bank, where we had Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Bobby Roode, The Miz, Samoa Joe, Rusev, and Kofi Kingston as the member of New Day. Yeah, so it began with the slow reveal of who was yeah, in which first, was fun. first big. The new day can pull that off. Yes. Big E was going to go in, and then it was going to be Xavier, Xavier, and he rips his fun. shirt off, and it said Kofi. Yeah, was that supposed to be in like <laughs> maple syrup? Kofi written on his chest because it looked all daubed yeah, on. It looked, it looked really should have been in green. Yeah, it should have been in green. Yes. Um, <laughs> there were some. Oh, they could have come out and called themselves the Green Day. Oh my. Only. Oh. But I don't know if they had the time. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we can't afford that. Stop right now, because it's going to be three seconds. It's not going to be good. Uh, maybe we'll get that one September. In. Oh. You're making me a basket case. Like <laughs> this dookie coming out of your mouth. How about that, folks? Shut up, you We're American idiot. Oh, there it is. Right. Um... 
some fun <laughs> spots. Uh, everybody buried Braun Strowman with ladders. Yeah. Uh, they buried him as bad as Corey Graves was burying everyone that night. God, he he was on rare form, yeah. telling us that Oscar is dumb and Elias is terrible. I think it's all that peroxide in, yeah. his, in his hair that's got his brain. Anyone who did anything that looked a bit like a submission move in any of the ladder matches was a dick. Yeah, honestly, yeah. It, it was kind of funny. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of enjoyed it at times, but... <laughs> lots of lots of back and forth, lots of runs up the, the runs, yeah. lots of stuff like that. Lots of Kofi avoiding getting seriously lots hurt by ladders. Kofi should be so thankful to whatever deity he prays to that he was not serious. Narrow, injured. narrow avoidance of some of that metal. Yeah, but I once had some great spots. Uh, He's screaming as he ran to Braun and getting and pasted. Kind of yeah. uh, I heard that Bobby Roode was in the match. Um, he was there somewhere, yeah. yeah somewhere. Uh, uh, Finn Balor was trying to do some type of Spider-Man routine. I don't know what the hell's going on. With Finn His Balor's. outfit was blue and red. Well, he came out wearing Shinsuke's jacket. Yeah. Some for some reason he stole that. But he did have the time to put uh, Balor Club. Logo His logo yes, yeah. yes. Because um, Balor Club is Balor for Club everyone. Is Lots of people have fallen off. Is. The Ballard Club is, is it everyone. Is it is Ballard Club for everyone? Mm-hmm. Ballard yeah. Club's for everybody. Because it used to just be a gallows and angels. Yes. They, the Ballard, they, Ballard, they Club, Ballard Club for them. Ballard Club is for gay baiting in order to sell t shirts. Yes. That's, That's what it's for. That's what it's for, and it's doing it quite well. Um, lots of good spots off the tops of the, of the ladders. Um, at one point, Ron. Runs through a ladder, literally. <laughs> sort of. Okay, so he well, ran through the middle yeah. of it, and it collapsed, and they dropped it. I guarantee you the spot was that he it was straight through. Straight through. Probably through. It was like, still good. Was why he, he, he turned around and looked back at it like, ooh. Yeah. Uh, and it worked, man, though. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah, was and and the Miz that. sold it, his yeah. reaction. Miz, Miz was great voice. this whole match. Yeah. That's, that, that, I mean, that's we, could just, we could just take that clip right yeah. there and put it on every match. That we have. Yeah. <laughs> true, this true. Great in this match. Yeah. Uh, just, Kevin Owens went through uh, the the gimmicked up uh, electrical cabled table at the very top of the ramp yeah. after teasing a better spot, teasing, of course. Yeah, a huge spot which again, that was was a very dangerous spot. They teased. Mm-hmm. Don't tease it if you're not going to do something. It's kind of like uh, Chekhov's gun. Yeah. yeah. Don't it's, pull that thing out. Don't pull it out unless you're really going to get yeah. to some of it. So we end up getting what we thought we were always going to get, and that is Ron Strowman now is the monster in the bank. He has the briefcase. Yeah. Whoopee. Which is such a waste of opportunity. He does not need, he need that it. in any way. Ron shape Strowman or doesn't need it. Finn Balor All they need, need to it. do is decide that instead of having a really great uh, match with uh, Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman, and only giving us a triple threat match. No. Just give us the two guys. That's yeah. the well, they did match. once, didn't they? And he just lost clean to Brock, and that was it. I don't. Re- I don't recall that. I know they had a match. I don't recall how it went. But it, yes. wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't even pay per view. I remember Braun Strowman at one point losing pay-per-view. clean to Brock. Yeah. I can't remember was. which one it was, but it was a pay per view. But I, just, I don't remember what it was. I remember a big one F five was that time when we really got excited about. Braun Strowman. Yeah. And the, the possibility, and they went to make the match, and then they made it a triple threat. Yeah. I, I think it was, it, who else it was shortly after he started going on a proper tear, and the crowd started going proper behind him. Yeah. And after the break, that didn't help him. Yeah. Um, overall, as money in the bank scam, it was horrible. <laughs> um, not a lot of redeeming things in it, but. Honestly, that's kind of par for the course lately when it comes to these pay-per-views. Again, they were putting in a lot more uh, commercial time into this new Great Bash in Australia. Mm. Um, Throw another wrestler on the party. I don't know what it's called, but you know we've got people like uh, Undertaker facing Triple H, and even Shawn Michaels is coming out of retirement for this but thing. But it's another one of these, what is it, Madison Square Garden? Yeah. The East. And and to a certain extent, the Saudi Arabia thing. Uh-huh. Like these are not even pay per views. They're just things that happen, and they're they're. they're, just, they're who's how, got they're, the most money? They are okay, house what do you want shows. To see? They're house shows that are televised. Yeah, absolutely, and that's and that's what it comes down to. So they give a lot of attention to that. 
I I would give this pay per view a strong C. Not even a plus. Not even a minus. Just no. a C. I mean, just out of spite, not giving it a minus. Yeah, no. absolutely. Fuck it. I mean, I see that, but I I I genuinely yeah, wanted that. I like that's one of those things. Well, why don't you as give a, it a minus, as a, pro- as a professor, please. There there please. are times where, especially on like a paper or a smaller thing. No. Or something, but just just genuinely, minus. I like to give somebody a B minus. That middle just finger, beca- just because yeah. you know damn well you did everything. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know you probably you know. got a regular B, yeah. but I'm just giving you the minus because because <laughs> damn it, you could have done. Better I know this. that you're no. I know that you idiot. know. You know that I know you. Know. You just made the list. You just made the list. But list I, but false. here it's a C. C minus. I wanted to have a minus. See, like see minus. I, maybe even a D. Oh my god. I don't know. Figure oh, wow. it out. Commit. Thank you. Jim. Well if he's not gonna if he's not gonna do the D minus, I'll do the D minus. And they're lucky they don't get an F because F if if we wanna look at it as did this succeed as a piece of entertainment, no it failed. F. In fact F. F. <laughs> F. <laughs> F. Failed. Hot garbage TV that following something like Takeover Chicago should not be viewed as acceptable as a product. It simply shouldn't. Is, anytime that there's going to be an NXT Takeover, you can guarantee that guarantee. it's going to be way more entertaining yeah. than the pay per view that follows it. And I fully admit that maybe I'd have been less harsh if it wasn't a, a takeover weekend at the same time i'm not a metacritic anymore so i don't have to care about a professional grade f all right f uh we are gonna have some exciting stuff coming up this next weekend uh june the 23rd out of the hideaway in jackson mississippi pro wrestling ego is coming back with unfinished business one of the main things that we're excited at least joe and i are excited about is the return of Joey Abel, who we haven't seen in well over a year since he had to vacate. It wasn't the... a whole year. Wasn't it just like November? Man, I don't it know. It was before Christmas. I barely remember it was who not, I am most It was days. not 2018. So it was okay. definitely 2017. Okay. I believe it was late when uh, Joey Abel made the announcement that he stepped away from his reign pride champion yep. and set us off into half the pride right. of course the past six months or so. Uh, that has led to OSHA and both belts. Both belts, right there. Probably. The, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, so Joey Abel's coming, coming back, and I, I'm looking forward to hearing more of the story of that and what what has brought that about. Sure. Uh, we'll was, see people like OSHA Edwards, we'll see Ray Fury, we'll see Sturdust, we'll see a lot of people at this event. Jim, since Sturdust is your client, what can you tell us about what's going to be happening? Well, I think that, that in all honesty, the crowd is going to be very, very excited to see the undefeated Sturdust uh, putting in an appearance, a very fortunate for them appearance. Uh, They should be grateful and groveling and appreciative and awe-inspired and afraid and just pleased to see someone with a real a real fuel under him like like just just propelling him forward uh he is going to tell everyone the good news the good word the good word because they finally have a winner they finally have championship material they are witnessing I did this is the beginning of the stir right now. Hang on, let me roll that R better. That was weak. The stir. I like that one better. I'm going to keep yeah. that one. I mean, I'm going to keep the first one, but of course... Oh, I mean, yeah, just keep all of it. Keep all of it. I, I, I don't like to edit this for shit. Um, <laughs> so Joe and I will be there. We'll be doing commentary up in the balcony. Lots of good stuff. So June 23rd at the Hideaway in Jackson, Mississippi. Come see for Wrestling Ego. If you're Arkansas, Louisiana, Alabama, wherever you are, make the trip because Washington State. Let's Maine? let's put a pin in that. Maine? No, a bit far. Alaska. If you're able to drive, drive here. Drive here if it's less than like ten hours. All right. Yeah. Totally worth it. I it mean, is. and it's a, a show at the Hideaway, the Pro Wrestling Egos uh, version of that. Square Garden. It really, of all the places that Pro Wrestling Ego goes, and we go around to a number of different locations, 
uh, state. Uh, it really is the place that is the best set up for watching yeah. pro wrestling. Great show. lights, it's, great sound. It's just good fantastic. atmosphere. Everybody, the audience is right there on the parquet floor with the wrestlers. It's a good time. So come on up. Thank you guys for tuning in uh, this week. Joe and I are going to be back with our weekly recaps of Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and 205 Live. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it. Jim, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. You are welcome anytime. And uh, we will catch you guys next time. Peace. See ya.